this is Sabina at Cross Keys Crafts. Today with an accordion fanfold card. Sam Calcott made this in her Facebook Live last Wednesday and I was really intrigued by that. I thought it looked fantastic and uh, in the last few days I had an idea how to recreate this and I want to share my ideas with you. First thing she did was to go with a the theme of this sort of geometric um, fan here, the shape. She used some art deco papers from um, Lou Collins, but I don't have these. I looked into buying them, but then I thought, oh, I've got so many paper pads, I'd rather not. But then I came across some stencils in my selection of stencils. And I thought these look really great and they are very art deco. I had a few more as well. So I thought I'd do something with these and I had to play around what materials I had because I obviously wanted the metallic look on the dark colours on the teal or even on black. So I had to play around with this. The first one was an absolute fail because I thought about doing some foiling and I just want to show you this. I have got this wow bonding powder. Maybe this is old or maybe the heat wasn't right. So what you do with this is you use your Versa mark and I basically uh, stamped my Versa mark through this uh, stencil. Uh, then you heat emboss it and then you lay on some foil. I use the wow foil here and put it through the laminator or you can use an iron. Problem I thought with this was when I put it through the laminator, it sort of melted a bit more so that um, the actually defined pattern sort of got really, really funny and it didn't adhere in all the places. So I dismissed that. The second thing I tried then is using this uh, metallic gilding polish through the stencil i used this stencil instead and this one works fine it's just with this one i use teal on teal and obviously there is no contrast so that would work using gilding polishes then for a bit more contrast i use the lunar paste that's a simon hurley lunar paste for the stencil and you can actually see it's much more defined and i actually like this one so it's not as shiny as foil, but it is still quite nice. So that is something that does work. And let me just show you what I have used on this card. This is the Decofoil Transfer Gel Dual. And you apply this like a paste through the stencil and leave that to dry until it gets tacky. And then you adhere the foil and you can either do that with heat or just with your with pressure basically by running it through your die cutting machine which is what I did with these pieces and I thought the outcome was really nice I only found with the bigger stencils if you don't apply it very neatly I don't know if you can see you've got blobs and I tried it on black and that was really patchy and I actually dismissed that and threw that in the bin but um, that is right, quite a nice version to create your own really stylish papers. The other idea I had, well, it wasn't really my idea. Um, it was basically Sam Calcott who mentioned that in her video. She said it, this uh, shape and the Art Deco style would really look nice with some peacock papers. And she had one um, or she had some that she showed um, on the video. But I thought I have got peacock papers because I've got this magazine and I only showed you that recently. I got that really cheaply at Craft Stash in, so I showed you this in my haul and that I thought was a, a great chance to use these papers that come in here. So just showed you these in my haul. So it actually came with a glitter card as well and I used this one but it also has some geometric pattern here. So I thought yes, I'm going to use these for this card. So I'm actually making two cards today because I want to show you two different options to just inspire you to have a look what you've got in your stash. So I've also used, that's what I've got in my hand, I used the um, stamp from that magazine as well. So I went back to Sam Calcutt's video 
and I wrote down all the measurements. Let me just get this out of the way so we've got a bit more light on this. So what you need for your card, for the card base, that's the bottom, you need a piece that's seven by eight inches and you score it on the long edge at one, two, three, four, five, six and seven inches. And this is what creates the base and you basically um, fold it like this. So mountain, valley, mountain, valley, mountain, valley, mountain. And then that creates the base of your card. Let me show that again on the almost finished card. So then you can cut a strip for the front here. I didn't want to do this for this one because first of all I didn't have any matching cardstock left. And I did it for this one but I lost it so I thought I'd just leave it for now because I will probably put the sentiment at the bottom but you can cut a strip and in her video she actually um, dry embossed it which looked really nice. So for the big fan element here which also sits on the back you need a piece that's 10 inches by 4 inches and you score it at 5 and fold it and after you've folded it, let me just take this piece here, you mark the middle um, on the bit that's not folded. So mark the middle at the bottom and then you cut it off. I found it's easier on my smaller guillotine than it is on the bigger one because it's easier to see. You can, if you want to, um, draw the line first with a pencil. Um, that might also be easier. Uh, it is a bit tricky to get the right angle and these pieces that you cut off please keep those because you need them for the fans on the side then if you want a matte layer with this one I didn't bother about the mats on the side I just had a mat in the middle here so for the matte layer you need a piece that is three and five eighths by four and three eighths and again you do the same thing you mark the middle and you cut from the top corner down here and from that corner down there and then you need two pieces that are four and one quarter by one and three quarters and you cut them once in this direction and once in this direction and then for the pattern cardstock you need a piece that's four inches by three and one eighth and you do the same thing as here you mark the middle and you cut it down there by the way i use this instrument to uh, mark the middle i don't know what it's called this is from my school days in germany it's in centimeters but it doesn't matter and it easily allows me to i'm sure i can show this on this but you just basically you've got the zero in the middle and you make sure you've got the same measurement on either side so that helps me to do it so it's that same thing you cut this off here and then you need two um, pieces of uh, paper that are three and three quarters by one and three eighths and again you cut in this direction and you cut in that direction but be careful if you've got any directional pattern because i can show you that with this piece where I had embossed because these bottom bits pattern will be upside down so it doesn't matter I think you can hardly see this here but when you attach them make sure you've got the same direction on this one and this one and the same on this one and this one so it's not higgledy piggledy all over the place with this with this pattern cardstock it didn't matter because it's the same upside down so that was fine so yes, so that is, I've already prepared all these. I've already uh, matted these pieces here. As I said, this was from the magazine and the um, gold was from the magazine. I'll just leave this here just a second. You want to take a screenshot? Because I wrote this all down because that helps me to create the card rather than flipping backwards and forwards in Sam's video. So for this one... I actually did this a bit, well I don't want to say wrong, but I did it differently to Sam Calcott because when I attach these fans, 
I concentrated on this 90 degree angle. I'll just show you these pieces. You've got one where you've got this sort of steeper angle and then the 90 degree one. And I thought I have to concentrate on this one. So these bits were all neat and then the side on the middle wasn't. But it doesn't matter because the style is still the same. So I'll show you in a second how to attach these. The important thing is that you lay these down. Obviously you put the mats and layers on as normal and make sure you've got the same edge everywhere. Actually I haven't because it was a bit tricky but never mind. Um, but when you put these on make sure that these are the same height and these are the same height. And I'm going to show you this in a second otherwise the world bit looked too wonky. For this one, um, because I thought what to use, and uh, Sam used a bird on hers, and I found this hummingbird die in my selection. Excuse all the paper bits that are in the back. I always cut my dies. If I don't put a full piece of cardstock underneath, I always put some paper underneath so I don't cut right into my cutting plate. In my yeah my cutting blade so I have cut this hummingbird from a strip of black cardstock which was actually left from this from this base and I also cut it from um, the bit of uh, rose gold cardstock that was left from this and this by the way this mat came actually came from some packaging so sometimes it's worth to use some scraps and I thought this was really nice as in a rose gold going with the foil on this one so I cut the beak from the same um, cardstock and the little eye and I put some uh, red tape between the part of the beak which I kept this off to show you how I did it so I cut the head with a beak and I put some red tape in between the rose gold and the black because that will keep the eye in and then I just put a bit of extra glue behind that bit and I've also used some black foam pads i only just recently bought these at craft stash so they're the creative craft products and i just cut these ap apart and just used a sliver of this underneath the beak as well so i can glue this down nicely on the front here so that will just sit like this and as i said i will add some sort of sentiment but i don't know yet for which occasion occasion i'm going to use this so for the other card, I'm going to show you in a moment how I assemble this. I have um, stamped and heat embossed the peacock in gold. Cut, fussy cut this out. And because the eye lost a bit of its definition, I just put a little blue rhinestone on it. And I think this would really look nice on the front. So, let me just get this out of the way. And I'm just going to show you how to assemble this. So first thing we're going to do is add these fans to the side. Uh, I just wanted to show you, although I was very, or well, I thought I was very precise in cutting these bits, some of them ended up being a bit longer than the extra card base, the layer here. So don't fret about this if you have that. Just cut all the overhang off because this will disappear underneath the big fan anyway in the middle but just cut this off so the recipient can't see this from the back there so I think that was the only one that was a bit um, wider said because this is the one that will show so what you want to do is make sure you have the right ones on each side. Also, um, I don't know if you can see, this has got most of that pattern there. So I want to make sure I'm having the same one here on the top. If I had this one on the top, the pattern wouldn't match on either side. So this one goes to the bottom, this one goes to the top. Yeah, as I said with the other one, make sure of the direction. So, and you start on one side and you basically want to um, align these like this. You want to keep a bit of a gap. What, what Ideally what you do, if you've got a grid on your uh, craft mat, just align this so this is straight and then find a point 
a line here that you align this on. And the important thing is, let me move this up so you can see, that this edge here lines up with the tip at the bottom here. That's the important thing. It doesn't matter that this overlaps, we're going to cut that off in a moment. So and then it's basically up to you how far you want to go out, whether you want to move it in a little bit and leave some space. It's really your decision how big you want the fan to be, whether you want to stick it to stick it out like this or whether you want to move it in a little bit. It is really up to you. As I said, the important thing is that you, once you've done this, as I said, I just want to show you without gluing it down. And ah, by the way, I used my Collal glue. The quick wrap glue would be nice, but I thought it was easier to wriggle it a bit. So I used my Collal glue. So once you have got this, you just cut it down here at the bottom. And then you make sure that the other side, as the other side, the panels are on the same line. So watch this tip here and then adjust it here. And also this gap should be the same on all of them, approximately, roughly. So I'm going to glue these down now. I will actually do this on camera, but we'll speed it up for you. Okay, so you could see I actually used my ruler because at one point I wasn't quite sure anymore if I actually was on the same line because for some reason these are normal lines and these are the little um, stitch lines so I wasn't quite sure. So this is approximately the same width. Um, I'm not quite sure, maybe I could move this one in just a wee bit. And as I said, if you use the color glow, you have got the option of doing that. Of doing that. So just press it down a bit in the back afterwards as well. And you do have quite a bit of bulk at the bottom here, but that doesn't matter. We're going to glue that down in a moment. I'll just take another slip off. Moved it now. No, I actually move it back because I moved it now. I missed the little point there. So, but the peacock will probably sit over this anyway. So now we need to glue this onto the base and again you need to be precise there so like Sam Calcott I'm going to use my red tape I think she mainly used the red tape because she had a piece of embossed cardstock there but I find this is just as easy oh first thing we need to do is mark the middle on this cardstock so it is seven inches wide so if I'm going off screen I'm using the grid on my mat so I just marked here with my white pencil where the middle is so this is where I will stick the red tape and now you align this piece on here and then pop the back of the card underneath so it doesn't get in the way and now you want to have this lot here straight whilst m matching it up with the middle and it's up to you how how um, close you get it to the bottom but I just stick it on the bottom get this straight and then just press it down and that's it so now all that's left to do is pop this down on the back. Now I'm using my quick grab glue. Again, you could use some red tape. 
but it's just as easy. Put a bit on the tip there. Hold this down and press this down. And there we go. So that's our card nearly finished. And now all that's left to do is to decorate it. So I'm just testing my peacock. I might pop him onto some foam. I think I will. So, so I will just I'll do this off camera now. Stick him on some foams. I will do the same with the um, hummingbird. I will stick it on and then I will show you both finished cards. Okay, both cards are finished. As I said, the only thing that is missing is a sentiment at the bottom but could easily have a happy birthday. I'm not quite sure yet what to do with this. I might cut the sentiment out of the rose gold cardstock. But yeah, I think these are really nice and I'm really chuffed that I managed to do some or create some um, Art Deco um, cardstock myself. I think this is really lovely. And I do actually... Um, prefer this shape where I've got the um, 90 degree angles but you can do either way and this one is actually quite nice because it's a wider um, shape it goes really nicely with this peacock theme so yeah I'm quite pretty chuffed and a big thank you to Sam for showing how to create this card and giving me the inspiration and if you like these cards you might want to give me a like and if you'd like to see more of what I'm creating, you might want to subscribe to my channel. I post two to three, I'm sorry, I post two to three times a week if I can manage. And yeah, I'll see you soon. Thank you very much for watching.